military, but I've gone through depression that would cripple anybody. And it's not, I'm not comparing one to the other, but I w my depression was so hard. I was sleeping 18 hours a day. I went through probably what is called the world's worst divorce. And I know everybody thinks that, but in 2004, I went through divorce, had a seven-year-old and a four-year-old daughter. By the time each was 18, I have seen them less than 300 days. That's less than one year uh, and since, since they were seven to the time they were 18. And I fought every losing battle in court and I had right on my side. I can't give my testimony without making my ex look bad. So I don't want to do that. But let's just say I, did, I didn't want the divorce and everything in life I ever want to do, I just want to be a dad. I, I love being a dad. I'm a stepdad now. Uh, the love of my life is somebody I actually grew up with. After my divorce, I'd gotten on my knees and just prayed for just a friend, just somebody I knew in a past life. And I ran into my best friend from uh, high school and I ran into the girl who I had a crush on when I was in middle school. So it just, everything it worked out, but um, I still, you know, I have a stepdaughter now that I'm trying to do things for and you know doesn't really want that because she has her own dad right. and then two daughters that live as the crow flies two or three miles from me and i can't even see them i can't go to their house and they're being pumped full of all these lies about their dad and, and i just lose every time i wake up so uh, for like three years I, I wasn't working in the film business. I just left my, I just laid off from my last corporate job. And that was years ago. And so I just, I couldn't do anything. I couldn't move. And I'm like, this is the worst thing in the world. And I was suicidal three times. I, I don't believe in it. Uh, but my 13 year old stepdaughter literally took the pistol out of my hand when I was crying in front of, uh, right by the bathroom door, 13 years old. She does, she hates me at the time. She, she doesn't care what I do, but she loved me enough to be, she didn't know if I was going to go through it or not. She grabbed the gun from me. And at that point, I started to get out of it. A lot of prayer. God, God will get you through anything and everything when people want. People will let you down. I don't care who they are. They'll let you down because of your expectations, because of what your needs are. So right. that's what you're writing. It. And then I started thinking, I'm too self-serving. I'm sitting here writing a, a script called The Other Parent because it's about the other parent, the divorced dad that never gets the custody. So I started thinking about all my friends that went through the military and are seeing things far worse than I could ever see. You know, at least I get to see my kids. You guys are seeing your friends um, getting killed. You're, you're seeing um, stuff going on in the military that you may not agree with and you can't say anything about. You're, you're just in a situation far worse than mine. So long story short is I developed it into veteran suicide. And so Judy and I were going back and forth and we, we got together with, we, I guess we'd say we partnered. We partnered with Mission 22, We Are the Mighty, TAPS, and several other nonprofit groups that are associated with um, veteran suicide. And I uh, got together with all these families. And all these families were just constantly now on Facebook and you, this is my information about my husband who committed suicide, or my daughter, or my son. And they were all sharing the same stories. And what I learned so much is, yeah, my trigger was the divorce not seeing my kids. But for these guys, it was just the every day. You're every day over there. You have a purpose. You're serving. You're doing what you're supposed to do, what you're calling, what your gift is. And then when you come back, it's nowhere near the same, good or bad. It's okay. not the same. And it's never one trigger. It's never, oh, I'm my, like my nephew, my, on my wife's side, my nephew. And you can't script this any better. It's not in the movie. But in real life, my nephew was in Iraq, and him and two of his buddies were walking down a, a patrol. Literally, my nephew had to tie his shoe. So he stops with one of his friends, ties his shoe, and this other guy keeps going up patrol about 20 yards down the road. Boom, steps on an IED, blows him in half. My nephew has to pull his upper torso. I know we're getting graphic here, but he has to pull his upper torso. But that's not what set him into PS, PTSD because that was his job. Right. So what set him off was that was my purpose over there. And over here, you know, I can go to a grocery store and there's – food right there and I can turn on running water and there's water right here and people just they the, all the families were saying the same thing he just wasn't the same or she just wasn't the same and you can't find just like Holly my stepdaughter you don't see what's going to trigger that final moment because every day is just deeper and deeper into a funk that you can't get out of um and so that's what we did so everything in out of the fight that you see even though quote unquote, it's fictional. Everything that you see was told to me 
by at least 50 families.